goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. It's time. Oh. Oh, oh right now, what man? time is it? What time is it? It just happens to be 11.38, but... What time yeah. is it? If you think it's time, I think it's time. Hey, it is time, and y'all go for a second. It's time for the Good and Fuckery episode really? 44, and I don't know why I'm talking like this. Fuckery? Really? <laughs> I don't know why you're talking like that either, but I like the good and the fuck. And let's get into some deep convos on some crazy shit. All right. Hey, is it the the bracket still showing up or is it us? You are right. Let me get rid of the brackets. We are done for the all right. We ready now. Now it's fucking time. Fuckery time, fuckery time. Well, you know what? Let me let me start off. I'm gonna start off with some good matter of fact. Um whatever. Um well just some of my I would say I'm gonna start off with the good with um the Baltimore Ravens honor Michael K. Williams during the game. Whatever. That's dope. Much salute to yeah, all. First thing I uh first thing I saw uh today when I um just scrolling through pretty much whatever. We I'm going to go through this cuz this this there's a subject in the good and fuckery. I think I, I I want us to expound on pretty much. And expound we shall. All right. Good news y'all. Good news for the gamers. All right, we're going to get through the nerd news and we're going to get to the fuck. Good news for the gamers, right? Disney and Capcom is in talks of re-releasing the cult video game classic Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes. And I suck at fighting games, but that sounds awesome. That is the fighting game that started, like, is one of the ones that started, like, these tournament gaming competitions, pretty much. Yes, it and is pretty epic, too. They be going in. Yes, it's like watching. It's almost watching a prize fight. Like I, I told you, like my friend, um, uh, uh, my friend twin, and my brother. When they meet up, they come in with the big ass arcade um, gaming consoles, and they go at it with the fighting games. And I'm pretty sure they're excited about this because Marvel versus Capcom games is just one of those games that the game somewhere they are both sharpening around. their swords, getting ready for battle. And it is scary, B. It is scary. The counters that happen. Twin to this day is the only person I ever seen whoop ass with Zangief. Zangief. Yeah, so, if you know how to use him, he's actually a beast. I don't know how to use none of them, but if you know how to use him, he is a beast. I've seen it on yeah. like YouTube videos. Can't do nothing with him, man. If he grabs you, that's half your life right there. Absolutely. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Going forward in the nerd news, Blade, there's going to be a Blade Runner 3 in the works. Uh, when was Blade Runner 2? Actually, they consider Blade Runner 2, that um, that Blade Runner movie that came out in 2017, because it's like a continuation of the first Blade Runner. Um, that, oh, that I was Blade it was Runner 2049. It was a soft reboot, because it's still, how to say... It's still in that same world, and then I think in this blue, um, this um, Blade Runner that's coming up, they also going to put Harrison Ford upon it with Ryan Gosling too. So, oh, that'll be we'll good. see. Okay, we'll see. I'm interested. All right. So, more on on uh, media see news, me. pretty much. Face your way. Oh, wide awake. Well, I hope you're wide awake for this. Why? You- so y'all remember the Wonder Years, that old 80s show? Mm-hmm. With Whitney and uh, Kevin. Yeah. And Paul. Yeah. Yep. So it's coming back on ABC through Hulu. There's a catch. This is the black version. So it's the Wonder Years, but it's with a black family. I like that. 
Is it set during the same era? I believe so. By the looks of it, the way they close and everything, feel, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Set in the same era. They better play it realistic then. Mm-hmm. No, no, he did. They, Don't this sugarcoat is a, uh, shit. No, it's a trailer. <laughs> it's a trailer where um, the son says uh, that his father's phrase was be cool in every situation. So they have him in different situations where all right, he's starting up the grill. If fi- fire just flames the freak up and like, be cool. Uh, kid fall down, be cool. Then you see him, he behind a wheel and you hear the flashing lights in the background. He's like, be cool. So it was a funny little trailer. Pretty much. It gave me like, good. it gave me like, um, uh, everybody hates Chris vibes. Okay. Someone. That ought to but, be interesting. Uh, I'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah, like I would say, one of years is one of those things that I loved the sitcom back in the day because our it was nostalgia. But watching it, it was like episodes where you know I am completely bored watching this. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, because like, it wasn't it was, that funny. It was so it was like more serious, it was more like a drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah but. <laughs> The theme song was the best part of the show on some real shit. Yeah, pretty much. That's why I felt. Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song. We try not to sing out of key. Oh, baby. Everybody sing out of key. I have a little help from my friend. You are supposed to sing that part out of key. That's the funny thing about it. Like, <laughs> like you oh, feel yeah, it you more you. when you sing it out of key. <laughs> um, but you, you know what? You know what, Tiz? You know what yes. I think is funny? No. Here's a theory. Here's a theory. Are some of the shows great because of their intro music? That is very we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. I wonder if you take the intro music, do you are you just as hype? I, I put in a play like you know how you, you I do you, like uh, every show that I actually like the theme music for. I don't know yeah. of any show that I like the theme music but don't like the show. Exactly. So like you ever watch Ben, you like binge a, a show I and like then just you ain't like what? I don't like Family Matters, but I like the song. Mm. Nigga, what? Three, two, one? One, two, three? Oh, I like parts of the show, but I don't like the show in the total. I don't like how they did her at the end of the day. They I think the same. Yeah. Up. They gave that nigga a key to his house. Yeah, your nigga key to their house, and every day tormented this nigga emotionally. Get out, Steve. Go home, Steve. Get out, Steve. Steven. I've known you all these years, and I feel like I'm just meeting you for the first time, bro. Shit. Oh, oh. Fuck Carl Winslow. Oh, no. Not Carl. Shit. Now, with, not in that episode. Peace, Carl. He, um, not in that episode when he confronted those two white racist cops or whatever. All right. Before he realized that his son was actually telling the truth, he was a dick. But after he realized it, yeah, he went in. He made up for it. Redemption. Redemption. He never did. Pretty much. Hmm. You say he never what? I said he definitely did. Oh, he definitely did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga got it. That was funny. I'm out of, I'm gonna YouTube that later on because that was a that was a great moment in black television. <laughs> along along with that, um, that heartfelt Will Smith moment when he was hugging Uncle Phil because his dad left. One of the greatest moments in black. <laughs> you don't want me, man. Never forget this. Steve Urkel saved Carl's life several times. And the next day when Steve came over, Carl still kicked this nigga ass out the house. <laughs> hey, you got a boy. Let's so also never forget this nigga was trying to fuck Carl's daughter. Man, but he didn't really true. have a chance. He never really had a chance, man. 
until he wore her down after like 16, 17 years and they let this nigga move in. I don't give a damn. That yeah. was his fault. You want to fuck, wanna fuck my daughter, you, you, you ain't never coming to my house. He lucky he made it into the living room. Say that nigga. <laughs> I, I had to put some bird shot in his ass. Mm-hmm. That nigga needed a friend. <laughs> That nigga needed Enough. his daddy. <laughs> another topic for another time. Black sitcom moms randomly changing their whole appearance into a whole nother person. By meaning, I, I mean, you know, actors taking over the job. But that's another yeah, subject for Harry another day. Was the one I cared about the least. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right, time to get into the fuckery. Pretty much, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with just a quick phase, All right? Um, I believe earlier today or yesterday or whatever, there was this thing on Twitter where they had an argument about Drake being a bigger artist than Michael Jackson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this short right now, nigga. What? Yeah, that there's a debate about Drake being b- bigger than Michael Jackson. I'm gonna look into my eyes, America. Look into my eyes. So he's physically media. bigger because that nigga like six something. And Michael was a little man, but come on, man. Michael yeah. Jackson has literally wrote and performed every song you listen to right now in somewhat way or form. Michael Jackson has got more music. Than people older than him. Period. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for a Michael Jackson, it would not be a Drake. Period. Every every subject matter that Drake has ever spoke about is just a future version of the shit that Michael Jackson was talking about in the eighties. I put it like this. and in the nineties, you can go a place and find somebody who don't like Drake. I don't know who nobody who's ever said they don't like Michael Jackson. You can put it like this. At the end of the day, Michael Jackson's career is longer than people who are older than him. His career is longer than them. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. His there's 80 year olds that did not have a longer career than him. His reach is longer. You can you can say Michael Jackson. If Drake don't sit his ass down, it's not Drake. It's his fans. It's always the fans. Like it's never Nikki. It's the Barb's. You know what I'm saying? It's never Beyonce. It's the High. Uh, except when we talk about Kanye, because when it's Kanye, it's it's always just Kanye. And then sometimes this is true, (laughs) pretty much. But yeah, y'all y'all shut that shit up, man. It there's Michael. if there's no Michael Jackson, there's a lot of artists that don't exist. And a lot of music that don't exist. Big matter, fact, fa- matter of fact, didn't he, didn't he steal from Michael Jackson to do two since live? Not only that, he had Michael Jackson on his album before this one, Scorpio. Show sure enough did. He went out his way to get Michael Jackson lyrics. That's Drake saying that Michael Jackson is better than him. I got a topic. Is Drake a culture vulture? Next time on The Partners. It's debatable. You could say half of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to leave that alone. Let's go on to the fuckery. All right. <laughs> I say go on to the fuckery like the next topic is 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 anything less worse <laughs> this is even worse all right um i wish uh, let's put the face disclaimer here <laughs> on this topic all right so this oh, texas shit. mom this texas mom named Carla and he did Bell. the smile yep he did it, he uh, did it. Enjoy. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> enjoy this one everybody <laughs> This Texas mom named Cara Bell went to a school board meeting about COVID. 
to furiously. I rant. started to put this on the good uh, on the uh, you didn't ask us, but this weekend. Mm-hmm. We can still do it, but bring it back up. But she furiously ranted about anal sex during a COVID public school board meeting. Now, loud the, on the a microphone. Re- loud. Like she she vividly dis well, she all right. The person that wrote this book that she was quoting that her son was reading for school or whatever vividly described a scene in in her book. The book was called Out of Darkness by uh oh, Ashley it got, Hope. It got dark Perez. Um it features a section about anal sex, which she feels is highly inappropriate. Bell told the board, I do not want my children to learn about anal sex in middle school. Bell said, I have never had anal sex. I don't want to have anal sex. I don't want my kids having anal sex. And I want you to start focusing on education and that public health. Um, the only thing I got to say about that is we don't care if you don't want anal sex. That don't got nothing to do with it. All you got to say is I don't want my kids <laughs> reading stuff like this. They're too young to be reading this. You're telling me too much about yourself and your boring ass sex life. That's 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 too much. Yeah, so I don't need to know you Karen, like that, player. I don't need to know you like that. So this week's Karen is Kara Bell. Like I understand the play. Like they uh the school board actually took the, the book off um the curriculum and everything. So <laughs> like I mean, I totally understand where she's coming from, but and I mean, there's a time and place like this. This is about COVID pretty much. But she may not felt she might have felt like this is the only chance she got to talk about it. Or That's whatever. Real. Maybe she maybe she she just didn't get the, the memo that this was about COVID. And then the other thing I disagree with is that she said you need to start focusing on education and not public health. No, they need to focus on both because they can't educate if the child is sick. If the child is too sick to come in to get educated, the whole that defeats the purpose of education of of an educational system. So it has. So when you have children in an institution, the institution has to take care of those kids while they're under their supervision or why would we bring out i don't have kids but why would we bring children to this you you speaking on behalf of parents right now pretty accurately yeah so so i'm uh yeah that's the only thing i disagree with or whatever just the way she went at it she could have like wrote to some of the board members or whatever, but ma'am, I, I don't. We don't need to know what holes. Yeah, we don't need use. to know about no sphincter action. We good on that. Yeah. No, no, no Twizzlers, no koi fish. I don't, what is it about these Karens, man? When y'all, all right, you have an issue. X, just save the issue. We don't need to know your emotions and everything around it, or whatever, and your personal shit with it. Just state your issue and None go of your about your business. Shit. We don't need it, literally. We ain't having Person. it. <clears throat> she, she ain't having it either, evidently. But <laughs> maybe she needed. Really That's why she was so into that book instead of her real life. Yeah, the way she was acting, man, she was seemed like she was stressed out, man. I was about to. I bet you her uh, kids are on the internet watching everything crazier than that. Exactly. And exactly. She don't have a clue, but she got a clue on what book they read. It's please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have. I'm. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, ma'am. I think you need Ooh, to take Ooh, Face's advice and smoke a blunt. He ain't really yeah, say chill, that, but I chill, think you need to. Yeah, relax, lady. You're uh, talking about anal sex at a board meeting, ma'am. You need to just go all the way and sit down. Uh, I think you need to go lay down. Go lay down. Something. Well, the next the next amount of fuckery um pisses me off. So we're gonna get real serious. This was brought up on our live earlier, but afterwards yes, in the sir. past couple of days, 
other things have came up, so I'm bringing this out. And all right, I ain't never thought I'd see today on 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 TV. I thought I wouldn't either, but I'm not surprised. So, sadly, but this fuckery, Border Patrol using what the media call cords, I they call whips. them whips. They whips. I call them whips. Whip is on Haitian migrants. Whip. Or Haitian migrants, or whatever. Yeah, the sight of um, white men on horses riding behind black men with whips. That was a very jarring PTSD moment. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I ain't think um, nothing nice when I saw it. I don't think nothing nice now. Like, nah. It, if this is not proof to black people that it doesn't take much to have us go back to 1800s. They don't take not much. They Literally could not just have wait. an earthquake and flee your country. They could they not wait to do this. Texas. Now, all right. Okay. The we, state we, that we, does not want us to teach about slavery in the first place. That one. Uh, the Also, the state... Um, with the crazy abortion laws and the open carry laws, pretty much. Um, I know, I know Florida over the past couple of years have gotten the the crazy state award and stuff, MVP award, but Texas is like Texas is like the Jay Z of crazy states. They, and it got a they're larger. Crazy. Yeah, that that maybe is because they're larger, the so they got more things. They got more space to. They got more space for <clears throat> more time to think wilder shit. Texas is the grandfather of Florida I when it comes that. to craziness. They both they both st- started with this with the um, with the Spanish, so maybe it's some um, in that water. Because that's all Te- you know. The Spanish also did the Inquisition, so the Spaniards mm-hmm. are they got a history of some wild shit. So uh-huh. now I'm there. Uh, the White House press secretary, Jennifer Renee Pizaki, uh, she was asked about it and in in behalf of the White House. And all right. I don't feel like this was like the pro, uh, uh, response I wanted from the White House, but I give it to her. She's in it. She was in a weird position to just try to answer that at that moment and she probably felt like anything she said at that moment would probably be the wrong thing but I I could tell by the response because she said it's obviously horrific but I haven't gotten full context of the situation even though I cannot imagine any context where that behavior is appropriate so I feel like inside she wanted to say a lot more whatever Mm -hmm. but because of the position that she's in she couldn't just say it pretty much Mm -hmm. but i'm saying this is a good time for the president and vice president to stand on the people that uh decided to vote for them and um actually speak out against it instead of just you know trying to be political (laughs) like this like it's hard to not be political it's hard to just say look this is fucked up and we're gonna find a way to fix this I'm um just I'm do gonna, that. I'm just do I'm that. gonna get it. I'm gonna get into Biden. I'm gonna get into Biden a little bit more. But this is the one thing that pissed me off even more. Not more than seeing the sight of that guy on horseback with that whip. I ain't even gonna say what the media call it, the whip. But the um, I, I guess he was like the chief or whatever the high ranking officer of the border patrol came up and actually spoke and ironically whitest looking dude ever his name is Alejandro Mayorkas how your name now maybe it's because you're right there at the border but your first name is is Mexican your last name sound Greek either Greek yeah Greek some like some Mediterranean uh, Eastern European. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, how do I know you're not a you not an immigrant? Like, you got two immigrant names. Like that. <laughs> so this is what he says. I don't even want to say this, but if if you come to US to the US illegally, you will be returned. Your journey will not succeed, and you're endangering your life and your family's lives. This administration is committed to de- developing safe, orderly, and humane pathways for migration, but this is not the way to do it. Now, with you saying that... Make sure you keep whatever, the same energy for everybody that come over here. Every not, single one from every country. Not, you know what? I say that, but at the same time, when I look at this, I look at this as a threat to me. Like this ain't the first time that they've done this to Haitians, too. This is the like this, they did this no, they in do Florida this. back in the day a little bit or something like that. If I am mistaken, they, but they kind of treated them is, crazy when they came over as refugees. Through Trump, they have openly already said how they feel about black and brown countries. Period. And this is just an example. Now, this is the politically correct way of he, what Alejandro was saying. But when I hear, if you come to the U.S. illegally, you will be returned. You know what that sounds like. If you come around my block, the fuck out. if you come around my block, you can get your ass the fuck out. Peace. When when he says your journey will not succeed and you're endangering your life, anytime you say you're endangering your life, that is a threat. And just off of your actions, that is a threat or whatever. Agreed. Like, they just had an earthquake. The president got assassinated. They're trying to find asylum or whatever. They're just trying to find a safe place to be from right now. That's all they want. They ain't asking for the... I don't even think they're asking to like, stay in your country forever. they just like, hey, so we can get shit good back home. Can we stay here for a second? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, shit happens. Like, I don't believe that everything is a conspiracy, yo. Let like, them go live in Wyoming. That shit empty as hell. Human, humans are not technologically advanced enough to create an earthquake to cause some situations okay i read enough comic books to know that that's a comic book situation right there all right that how i feel about that um because i know people who are saying that you know like this might be the next racial thing but it's always a racial thing pretty much and it's just like with face there's another reason i know it will we were breaking up a lot on live or whatever but as like face was saying or whatever you know, y'all making all y'all way for getting the um, Afghani refugees over, pretty much. The same resources. It's not like we're not slack with resources. The same resources that you can use to do that, you can use in the same situation here. And you don't have to worry about a lot of military resources because this is not a military situation. This is a humane situation. You know, like we, the America is always good for adding, like, we're the most humane country or whatever, <laughs> whatnot. But over we the past not. couple of years, everything that's been done over the past couple of years has proven that is not the case or whatever. True. A hum- uh, America is humane for marketing situations. The same reason why. Big business give to charities or whatever is because they can get a tax write off and it makes, makes them PR look good. Stuff. That's all it is for. Now, um, there have been some some leaders that have spoken on the, this how that situation has been handled, like um, Senate um, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Um, he basically called Biden's administration out and he says we cannot continue these hateful and xenophobic um, Trump policies that disregard our refugee laws and they're speaking into the um, what was the law, the law called Title 42 and um, it's it's a Trump era public health order right, but they're using the aspects of it as a as a way to expel the migrants that's seeking asylum, pretty much. So they're using laws or whatever 
to do whatever the hell they want, pretty much. And I, I mean, I, I don't believe in chaos, but in this system, I really don't believe in laws too much. I believe in morals and values or whatever, but when you have people in the system that's just using laws and loopholes and laws to do whatever the heck they want because they felt they wanted to feel like the good old boys back in the day and and re and re um kindle or re live some some life their great grandparents had lived that their grandparents was talking about pretty much on the low not around other black people of color or just around their family like that's sick that is just that's freaking sick and and just the the nerve of this dude alejandro with no empathy no like no empathy for the situation no grasp of the full situation or whatever and just saying that cold up front or whatever these people are coming from an earthquake I, I just feel like, like Texas. Weren't you just in a hurricane? Like, weren't you in a natural disaster yourself? Pretty much. Mm, like I said, man, if if Florida is the MVP of crazy states, Texas is the grandfather of being crazy state, being a crazy state, pretty much. But that that's that's the top fuckery, and and. Me personally, and I said this before, before the election, and I'm saying it afterwards or whatever. We, what are you doing, Biden? Where are you at? Like we, 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 before the election, we ain't go nowhere about seeing a Biden or Kamala all in your face, just as much as Trump, just to keep up or whatever. But now. It's, it's real quiet. It is real, real freaking quiet. Even in the Afghanistan, Afghanistan situation, I feel like he's a little bit more quiet, quiet. He's only been talking just because he has no choice but to talk in that situation. But yeah, man. Uh, uh, well, that is the fuckery. Texas ain't shit when it comes to that. Um, um prayers uh to all the haitian refugees and, and, and migrants um i feel like the whole patrol border patrol administration should get punished for this period like not just that one person that was caught in the picture or whatever because the system itself gave him the arrogance to think that he could get away with it or whatever so the whole, so, and I don't think nothing, if we just punish one person or whatever, it's just a matter of time till somebody else tries some shit. So why don't we just go ahead? That's what we used to do back in the day, um, what your parents used to do back in the day or whatever. If, if they couldn't figure out who did what, just punished everybody. So might as well use it in this situation. Um, Biden, you ain't doing shit. I need you to start doing shit. You too, Kamala, or whatever, because y'all were talking all that jump, but you're quiet right now. Um, and um, uh, Trump, can you please shut the fuck up because this is all you're doing too. And yeah, that's the end of the good and fuckery, y'all. I already end on a whack, uh, bad note, but yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Face mob. Quiet some um bring some time in. I know you what did I say what you were trying to say in the live? As far mm -hmm. as the, the good point, because I felt, I felt like, I felt like you had some wisdom, or whatever. But goddamn internet conspiracy theory, conspiracy, um, yeah. 
It's the reason there. why I don't be talking too much in the lab. I don't be talking too much in the lab is I be trying to get into too many points, and I know more nine out of ten I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out when we live. So I try to hit high points hit and get in, mm-hmm. get in and get it out. But as long as y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all can carry on and flow it. Continue with the point on. But yeah, you hit it right on the head. True. True. But yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know what the heck happened. To <laughs> Shit. Where you That's what I want to know. We about to fell asleep. We about to pull to you. Nah, you probably went to the bathroom real quick and ain't say shit. <laughs> no, it is my brother. Probably find <clears throat> something. <laughs> Yeah, he might he might have thought I was gonna go a little bit further, but yeah, man, that's all I had to say. Uh, once again, I'm saying fuck body, <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. But another you shit get... on the live though, man. Just another shit about the land, man. I really believe people need to get, get started investing in land. <clears throat> I'm just purchasing land, man. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of land out there that's for sale. People just don't know about. It. You gotta start educating yourself. You can financial literacy. And learn about purchasing land, man, and what to do with land when you get it, man. Like, especially in Virginia, you got land that's coming for sale, and you got marijuana being made legal. Hey, learn what you can start growing per acre. Learn, learn your stuff, man. Dang right. I think that's. I think that's a good thing for like as far as building infrastructure with the black community, because one, we need land. Then we need Mm -hmm. economics. We need economics, and then we need mm-hmm. political pull or whatever. I feel like, <clears throat> and we need a way to communicate with each other without outside influence because I think that is the main thing that mm-hmm. is messing us up because we have too many outside influences saying, "Hey, you're not, you can't do that." We literally had Joe Biden say, "You're not black unless you vote for him." So. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I I think that's that's one thing. I, I we probably should touch on this a little later. Like, what would we need mm-hmm. to build the black infrastructure? Whatever. Yeah, we're gonna tap on that money. Money, money, money. Yeah, we tapped on it. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, yep, Tiz. I ended a good and fuckery with um um uh, fuck Border Patrol, uh, fuck Texas, uh, fuck Biden and Kamala because they're quiet. And um, <laughs> yeah, prayers to Haiti and the migrants. Oh, yes. Prayers to <clears throat> Haiti and the migrants. And, and, fuck, and, and fuck Alejandro Mayorkas. Fuck him too. Fuck Alejandro. Um, but definitely prayers up for them. Um, those people coming from uh, Haiti who are in need right now, please, if you can, they do need supplies to them. Uh, if anybody knows any way that we can help, uh, please, please let us know. Um, drop it in our comment section on YouTube or uh, throw us a DM. Let us know how we can help. Um, but yeah, definitely prayers out to them.